Welcome to Inside Bowling this week. We're in Limerick, PA, and with me now is Mark Roth. Mark, what got you interested in bowling originally? Well, I watched them build a bowling center three blocks from my house, so I watched them put it together, and when it finally finished, I went to bowl. Did you bowl in the junior program? Yes, I did. Uh, how many years? Oh, four. What was your, do you remember what your average was the first year? About... Uh, 156, some 150s. And what was it your final year as a junior? 197. What got you interested in going on the pro tour? Uh, about local tournaments at home and uh, local scratch tournaments, uh, scratch leagues, both for action and a ball for money. I bowl good. I feel let me give it a shot. Uh, a number of house bowlers average 220, 230, and they say, oh, I know, I see those guys on TV, and they bowl 180 or 190. I know I can beat them. What do you think would happen to them if they came out here? They would average about 150, 160. Uh, most of the conditions at home are very easy. Lane conditions are easy. Averages are about 25 pins to 30 inflated. They come out here, and we're rolling on a condition where it's not a block, there's no wall. you got to make good shots. If you don't make good shots, the scores aren't there. And these amateurs, you know, I don't think they could even average 175 out here. Mark, we appreciate you being on the show today, and we'll be right back with more of the Bowers Gazette right after this. Bowling this week, we have Harry Smith. And Harry, what is your title with the PBA? I'm the assistant tournament director. It's my seventh year. I'm on the other side of the fence now, bowling for 11 for 15 years. Now I, I work with the pros. I enjoy it. It's nice to be still in bowling. I remember not too long ago, I saw you bowl in a match on the USA Network. That was in the seniors match, although you certainly don't look like a senior to me. How'd you bowl on that day? Well, I won up fourth. I qualified fifth, won the first match, and uh, Dick Weber, my old buddy, and I went heads up, and we both struggled, but I come out on the short end of it, and uh, I think uh, Dick went on and won the tournament. He beat Glenn Ellison and my other teammate. And it was nice to be with the boys again and get a chance to bowl once a year in the seniors. How often do you bowl now? I bowl one tournament a year, maybe the Masters, when I have a little time off from the pros. And uh, I'm on the road so much, we don't get a lot of time to to participate. And, and I'm only allowed to bowl in uh, the seniors events and the ABC and the Masters. Why is that? Uh, while being assistant tournament director, I gave up my bowling part of it. and. Uh, Oh, 16 years on the road was enough. I kind of missed the competition, though. I uh, wish we had more senior events. We hope to in the future. If we have three or four a year, then I'll start practicing a little more. I remember a match a number of years ago. I saw it on TV, and you bowled with one of Delaware's own. Do you remember that match? Oh, that's Robbie Robbie. It's got to be Robbie. Yeah, he's a wonderful bowler, nice fella. He's a very articulate person. He's got a lot of talent. I think he does sign painting, and he's a draftsman and a terrific bowler. I'd like to say hi to Robbie if he's out there. And if I remember correctly, I believe you won that. I don't remember who won, but uh, Robbie was a fierce competitor, and uh, we kind of miss him out here in the tour. I hope he comes back and maybe bowls in some of our senior events. I'm sure he'd enjoy doing that. He's still active in bowling, averaging about 200 at uh, First State Lanes in Wilmington. Harry, we appreciate you being on the show, and we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, Gary. We'll be right back with more of the Bowers Gazette right after this. Welcome to Inside Bowling this week. With me now is Jay Robinson, and Jay is on the AMF staff. And Jay, what does that entail? Well, there are uh, three of us bowlers out here on tour on the AMF staff, Joe Berardi, Tom Baker, and myself. And we mainly do uh, personal appearances, uh, grand openings, bowling clinics. I've been to Europe uh, about 10 times in the last seven years. And it entails a lot of traveling and a little extra work for us on our off times. What ever got you interested in bowling to begin with? Well, my father bowled, and he was in construction, so every time it rained, I was always, uh, I'd look out, and if there was clouds, I'd get my bowling ball and wait for it to rain, then meet him at the bowling alley. So I started at a young age, I was like eight or nine when I started, and 
Uh, mainly it was my father. He bowled in leagues. I'd go watch him bowl, and I just got interested in it that way. Did you bowl in the junior program at all? Yeah, I really started in the junior program before it was uh, real big like it is now, but I started on my Saturday, Saturday morning leagues and uh, after school leagues. What kind of average did you carry as a junior? I carried about uh, in the 160s, I would say. I didn't average 200 till I was about 17, and uh, I went from 183 to 204, I think, and then I've been above 200 since then. And how long have you been on the tour? Too long. I've been on the tour for, uh, this is my 14th year, I think, 13 full year traveling. I noticed just a couple of minutes ago you had somebody over there helping you bowl, uh, giving you a little bit of coaching. Do most of the pros actually have that? Yeah, there's a lot of camaraderie out here, I think. We, we bowl, you know, 35 weeks here, and like I said, I've been out here for 12, 13 years, and you get to know a lot of the players real, real well. In fact, most of your, uh, your major friendships are out here because you're not home enough to really, you know, meet new people. So whenever I'm in trouble, there's three or four people that I can go Bill to Bigner. and Bill ask Bigner, them, you know, some questions, what am I doing wrong mainly? And they'll pick out hopefully just one thing and not five or six that I can work on. That's interesting to the bowlers at home. Most bowlers at home, they know they have problems with their game. They figure, oh, well, these pros, they, they know what they're doing all the time. They never have any problems. But obviously, everybody's human, and you get into a bad habit now and then. Oh, definitely, especially traveling around the country bowling in 35 different bowling centers. You know, like in league, you can go, and hopefully the condition's the same every week. Yeah, around the country, we bowl in 35 different houses. The conditions are always different. We're either playing from the first board, second board, third board, like we are this week, into maybe the fourth arrow or the 20th board or deeper than that. So we never get uh, get to stay in one position and bowl one one line the whole week. So there's a lot of change, and that creates bad habits, and sometimes you're not comfortable on that line, so you'll have to correct something. And it definitely puts you in a slump in a hurry. Well, KJ, thanks a lot for being with us here today. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with more of the Bowers Gazette right after this. Welcome to Inside Bowling this week. We have with us Mike Durbin, who is on the Pro Tour and has been there for quite a while. And he's also behind the scenes. You hear him a lot on the USA. And how are you doing this week? How do you think the lanes are? Well, the lanes seem uh, like so far like it's an outside shot. In other words, most of the players are going to be playing close to the first arrow or uh, near the channel of the lane. And uh, it seems like there's going to be a pretty good shot in the scores, I would estimate, to be reasonably uh, high. Which do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to bowl or do you prefer to do the commentary? Well, I enjoy the commentating a lot more than I do the bowling. I've been doing the bowling for 17 years now and I'm a little bit tired of it, but I would rather be bowling because that means I'm going to be making more money. What got you interested in bowling originally? Well, I came by it quite naturally. My parents were both bowlers. I was almost born in a bowling center. They owned a small eight-lane center in Burbank, California, and I grew up bowling and uh, practicing a lot. It, very natural. Were you ever a junior bowler? I never really participated in junior leagues at, as such. I started bowling in a men's league when I was 15. That was really the first league that uh, I competed in. And I, But I bowled as a junior. I just didn't do it in junior leagues. What kind of average did you carry the first year? Do you remember? Well, when I was 15 in that men's league, I carried 179. I missed by one total pin of being 180. How many years have you been on the tour now? 17. This is my seventh. This will be the finish of my 17th year. And you hit most of the stops? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm bowling close to 30 tournaments every year, yes. And how do you get from uh, the different tournaments? Do you have a van, or how do I you have, get there? I have a motorhome that I travel in every week. Uh, it's getting quite old now. It's a contest to see which is going to last longer, the motorhome or me. Okay. Mike, thanks a lot for being on the show. My pleasure. We'll be right back with more of the Bowers Gazette right after this. You going inside bowling? I'm here with another pro bowler named Sam Zurich. And Sam, what got you interest, interested in bowling? Well, I've been bowling for over 15 years. I started working in a bowling center when I was 13 years old, and out of that evolved a love for the game that's uh, been with me for 15 years now. And did you ever bowl when you were a junior in junior bowling program? Yes, I did. I bowled in a junior program for only one or two years, and then I got interested in a major league right away when I was 16 years old. And uh, that got me out of the juniors right there. Do you remember what any your average was when you, your last year in the junior program? My, my last year in the junior program, my average was, uh, I believe it was about a 198. And that's when I was 14 or 15 years old. Like, let's say if it was me wanting to come into a tournament like this, a PBA tour, how would you get into it? How do you get started? 
Well, first off, you'd have to have an established average of 190 for two years in succession. And after that, you would, uh, you'd have to get a couple um, notes of, from your prominent businessmen in your community stating that you're, you have a good attitude toward the game and you're a, you're a competitive player. And uh, after that, you have to send your entry, your, all your papers into the PBA. And, uh, and then after that, once you get verified and accepted, you have to go to a PBA school. This year you won some kind of a sportsmanship award. You know, I'd like to congratulate on that, but you, can you tell me what it was about? Sure. It's called the Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award. It was dedicated uh, after the late, great Steve Nagy, who was a great professional bowler, and he was a great competitor in the sense of sportsmanship. That's why they named it after him. Um, it's an award that exemplifies good sportsmanship on and off the lanes out of all the touring players. And the good part about the award is it's voted by the touring players, so it, it really means a lot and it's a very big honor for myself to, to get that award. Well, congratulations on that and thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Dave. And that'll be all for this week on Inside Bowling. We'll be back after this with more Bowlers Gazette.